So the floor is you, you, yours, Jonas. Thank you very Thank much. You. And I should have a new, armed with a new uh, little uh, token here, so I should be managing better than Benoit, I think. I'm desperately aware of the fact that I'm almost the last thing standing between you and the drinks. So uh, <laughs> starting from that position, I will do my best. Uh, and what I, I will give you some highlights from a recent study that we performed on behalf of Stukablen, uh, which essentially looks at the communication infrastructure and its importance for the broadband markets uh, in, in a broader perspective. So, uh, works fine. So I will just give you a bit on the background and the purpose of the study, uh, uh, highlight what is the key, uh, so the, the key thing really in the, in the uh, report, which is the, the, the discussion around different market models. Uh, uh, we look through an evaluation framework that we put together to evaluate the efficiency of different market models on the build-out and the efficiency of broadband markets uh, more broadly. We will look at two case studies that is reflecting the two market models in a very good way, very significant way. So you will see one that is um, geared towards obviously then uh, Stockholm, which is the municipality market model, and the other one being Copenhagen, which is more what we call the incum incumbent market model. I will go further into the details. And then look at some of the conclusions of the study at the end. Then. Just to give you a few words on the, on the, the uh, background of, of the report, we've done we, in, in 2010, we did a first study looking at various market models, and we had quite a, a, a broader array of various market models, uh, similar to the one that Krista presented earlier on, where you can see you know, where in the value chain is a, 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 an operator playing. Is it merely on the uh, infrastructure layer, or is it moving further up the value chain, offering communication services, uh, offering um, um, uh, end users uh, services and, and, and products. Um, we did that study, we looked at it broadly, uh, uh, and we came to certain conclusions. The, law, the study we did now is a deepening of that, and we've gone further into the framework, uh, a framework to evaluate the efficiency of these different market models, and we also focused on two uh, market models then. The incumbent model, as we call it, where you have an incumbent operator being vertically, vertically integrated fully, and then what we call the municipality model, which is then uh, the Stoker model, where you have a municipality, not operator, but a provider of a fiber network uh, uh, um, uh, offering that on an uh, operator neutral and open basis. Uh, and before going into the details, the, the analysis shows it strengthens the results from the previous studies uh, and it also uh, emphasizes the difference between the two case studies that we have, emphasized in the two case studies that we have in being Copenhagen and Stockholm. So uh, the, the, the market model is, and we've touched upon it during the other presentations, both Benoit uh, and, and Krista touched upon it as well, but it's worthwhile stating once again the importance of the various market models and the importance or the effects that a, to the level a, an operator is vertically integrated has a huge impact on a specific broadband market or a market. Um, a market w where you have an incumbent dominating, being vertically integrated, i.e. owning the full stack all the way from infrastructure to end user services, uh, is a model or a market model which is limiting competition. Uh, it limits competition and it, it drives also, it has also lower coverage uh, in general, it creates lower co coverage and the rollout takes longer than if you look at a model where you have one operator, a municipality owned or um, for any means um, owned in another way, uh, but that offers infrastructure services on an open and neutral basis and preferably staying at the dark fiber level, i.e. passive infrastructure. Um, uh, huge difference in, 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 in the impact of, of the, uh, that, that has on the market and the effects on the market. 
Uh, as you can see, incumbent model with various levels of integration, and if you look at the model leading to competition with client beds, that, that is one of the key things that is important to mention. In an incumbent model, the incumbent competes with its own customer. I think that was uh, something that Chris there mentioned earlier on as well. That is a very, you know, it's a, it's a rather tough environment to be, uh, be within if you're not the incumbent. <coughs> you need to play to the rules of the incumbent infrastructure or the incumbent operator owning the infrastructure. So even if you try to regulate this, it will have consequences for competition, uh, for sure. Municipality model, on the other hand, then, with low level of integration, and that's, uh, that is uh, one of the important distinctions to make because you can see that some of the municipality networks in Sweden has moved up the value chain off the communication services, and that might be depending on the market, how it looks, the competition in the markets, uh, the demographic of the markets, and so forth. That might be something that is necessary, relevant, but the best effects of having a, a uh, infrastructure player uh, is when the infrastructure player stays on the dark fiber level. That's when you get the best effects from a competition uh, perspective and, and also, uh, uh, also uh, innovation, which is very important. We, our framework that we looked at from, from an evaluation perspective didn't touch upon that, but if you I will come back to that later on when we look at Copenhagen and, and compare Copenhagen with Stockholm. Uh, you can see, uh, you, will s you, you can understand the difference if you have, as for the example with Copenhagen, one operator being TDC, <coughs> owning in, you know, in, 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 uh, in, in essence the whole market, and where you have a market such as Stockholm, where you have, uh, I think uh, Ulla mentioned that, a hundred different players on the network. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a rhetorical question, but where do you think that innovation thrives? Is innovation driven, is it nurtured in a better way in an environment where you have one single player owning the whole market, where you have a, a, a market situation where you have a uh, uh, hundred different players, uh, operators, companies working on the same platform with the ability to both partner, work together, and innovate together. So I think one of the key, key effects of a more open environment where you have a, a platform that is readily available for, for all and everyone on an equal basis, that is innovation. We haven't looked at that specifically because it's not uh, something that is uh, measured in terms of, of digital agenda targets and broadband targets for Sweden, but obviously that's a very, very important effect of, of this. So we looked at these two different models. We looked at the incumbent model, we looked at the municipality model, and the, the reason for calling it a municipality model is obviously uh, referring back to Sweden where we have a number of these ones, I think uh, plus 150 municipality networks uh, that acts more or less in this way, uh, and hence the name. And, uh, we looked at these two ones. We developed a framework for assessing a specific market such as Stockholm, such as Copenhagen, could be any parameter on it really. Uh, we, and we looked at essentially f five different characteristics of that market. We looked at coverage, i.e. the build-up, both the, ex the, the, the accessibility, i.e. that you have uh, the potential access to a network or a capacity, and also the penetration, i.e. how many uh, household has adopted uh, a, a certain level or a certain services. We looked at speed, which is fairly straightforward. We looked at speed in two directions then, obviously, uh, upload and download. We looked at quality of service. We looked at competition, and we looked at price. Price is, is obviously then a bit of a challenge characteristics because it's dependent on other um, uh, circumstances for each market as well. So that one uh, is uh, more difficult to assess, I would say. We developed a framework based on these uh, five different characteristics. We took two very uh, significant or uh, representative is the word, uh, uh, markets for the two different market models then. Incumbent model being Stockholm, uh, sorry, uh, Copenhagen, uh, municipality model being, being Stockholm. And then we compared uh, how well or how these two markets scored uh, according to our framework. Uh, and across the board, really, it is evident 
that the, when, it look, when looking at these five various characteristics then, that Stockholm fares or ranks very high in, in comparison to, to, uh, to uh, Copenhagen. Looking at coverage, Stockholm has much more build out where you have in, for example, TDC doesn't have in reality any uh, fiber based offering in, in Copenhagen. We looked at speed, Stockholm has far by far much higher speeds available to the market in Copenhagen. Same with quality of service, essentially the, the more higher capacity offerings in, 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 in Copenhagen is based on a coax solution. Uh, we looked at competition, uh, as said before, in, uh, more or less the only player uh, in, in the Copenhagen market is TDC in themselves, as compared, as compared then with Stockholm that has a number of different players. And price being then slightly difficult to measure, but there is a, a clear difference between the pricing of broadband in, in Copenhagen vis-a-vis -vis Stockholm, where approximately 30 percent uh, high prices in, 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 in Copenhagen. And also the thing with, um, with uh, one of the distinctions which is, doesn't come forward in, in the pricing but is very important to note then is that you have the availability of dark fiber in, in Stockholm which b basically creates the platform for having all these players on the net. Uh, dark fiber is more or less uh, impossible to get as a service uh, in Copenhagen because there's no real incentive for a, an incumbent operator to offer that as a service because it's a low margin service for the, for the incumbent. They let competitors in on a level where they do not control the competitor anymore. So from various aspects and many reasons, there's very limited interest from an incumbent to offer dark fiber. Uh, I've seen it happen in Stockholm where for example, um, uh, I think Facebook has built a, very, a huge uh, uh, IT center up in the north. Allegedly, they managed to put the incumbent in the Swedish market, and Telia, to offer them dark fiber. Uh, yeah, and that is one of the very, very few cases I've heard of, because then Facebooks would like to create their own network on top of it. And they have the bargaining power, they have the commercial power to to basically force uh, an incumbent being then, in this case, Telia Sonera, to offer dark fiber. Otherwise, it's very, very seldomly so that an incumbent offers dark fiber. So, conclusion-wise then, if we look at uh, the, um, the, um, some of the conclusions, obviously the report is in, in the deck, so you can look further into the report. I encourage you to read it and you can ask, uh, come back to, with questions to me, obviously then. Um, looking at the uh, digital agenda um, targets and ambitions, because some areas are less targets more than ambitions uh, and, and more ambitions, I, the, the conclusions from the study is that uh, the more of an incumbent model there is in the market, the more of a risk there is that you will not reach your digital agenda targets. Because the driver for the incumbent to build out a a fiber network to open that up for competition uh, on an open and neutral basis is very limited indeed. So uh, any region with that has a uh, that has a uh, 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 the ambition of reaching the targets uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the digital agenda and whatever uh, local broadband targets they might have uh, need or should look at the municipality model. Uh, which in the case or in the comparison of, of Stockholm and Copenhagen then seems or is much more efficient in terms of building a, uh, an efficient and, and well-functioning broadband market. And I think the, the, there are a few main underlying reasons then for the, the, in, the uh, municipality model's efficiency. Uh, and, and first and foremost, the, the, which Christa alluded to earlier on, the, 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 the focus for a municipality is not only a commercial focus or a gain. There's a lot of other focuses or t objectives in there as well in terms of building, building out an infrastructure that, that, that enables further investments by other parties, uh, that increases competition, uh, that drives innovation and, and creates value, value to the citizens. Uh, the municipalities also tend to have a longer perspective 
on the investment, which means that they can take the, the, the longer perspective, make an investment for the, for, the, for the longer run, and that has obviously then uh, a huge impact. Uh, and also, I mean, you can create a number of various proxies for trying to, to, uh, to, to uh, build the, the open network, but the, the true open network and the true uh, operator neutrality, that comes really when you have a, a, a play that stays on the infrastructure level providing the dark fiber to, to, to other operators and also to other uh, other um, uh, organizations such as banks and so forth because there's in, an increased need from many non-operators to actually build their own uh, networks on top of, a, of, a, of an available fiber network and, and uh, you know I think the, the, uh, the late or the, the recent kind of security discussions and, and, and so forth uh, has obviously um, put the focus on that uh, to, to an even further extent since we did the report uh, so, to, to, uh, to conclude further, I mean, the support from the municipality model is of key importance to any, any region, any city that would like to or has uh, um, um, high ambitions in terms of, of, of uh, uh, their infrastructure. Um, uh, I think the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the key thing which I touched upon further is not only the fact that you increase competition but you also drive innovation in a much stronger way and, and back to, to uh, my earlier point there is a huge difference in the ability to drive innovation in a market where you have one single player essentially owning the full market and in the case of Stock Hub and, and Stockholm where you have an open network with more than a hundred different players being both operators, service providers and other um, uh, companies that <coughs> same name. So that is uh, essentially uh, the things I would like to take. There are many other things obviously that, that this in terms of benefit from this in terms of asset sharing and uh, lowering barriers to even further uh, new uh, players coming into to, to an open network because the investment is already made. There is uh, uh, an asset sharing that both operators and other companies uh, can benefit from obviously and that drives the, the, the further competition. But uh, as I said, Please read the report and uh, you may, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.